I'm going to find me a real man. Yeah, I'm going to find a real man. Because yeah. I'm a real And not some McDonald's dollar nigga. menu has been ass nigga in a Goodwill suit. Keep talking, goddammit. You keep talking, I'm going to slip out of this Goodwill suit and slap that fake ass wig off your what peanut shaped ass head with nothing but my Gucci boxes on and be back in this coat before it get wrinkled. And you know I can oh, do Oh, here you go with this ninja pimp shit. It's the comic, 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 comic book book. Man, you come right out of a comic book. It's the comic, 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 comic book book. You will not die for me! It's the comic, 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 comic book book. Now I am the master. It's the comic, 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 comic book book. Welcome back to the Combo Bullets, Nurse New Bullet, your host Leroy, aka the only AI we acknowledge is Alan Iverson with my co-host. All right. This is Eli, aka Ninja Pimp. Why did you know what? That's what I was gonna say. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I should have went with that, but that's okay. That uh, was the best line. Oh, there's a broadcast with my face. Did you send that or did I send that? I didn't send that. The fucking AI sent that. Oh shit. oh shit! Oh shit! We're in it now. <laughs> We're in the shit now. Me <laughs> deep in the shit. <laughs> Let me calm down. I, I apologize. I apologize, oh great AI. <laughs> anyway, we're back with another episode. We're gonna jump into it. We missed last week. We decided to go on vacay, but now we're back with the episode. We're back grinding again. Give you a fresh episode. Uh, we're just gonna just dive right into it. You know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna share the link while I'm talking. Also, if you want to share the link, that's cool. Oh yeah, but I should share the it, link. Yeah. Anyway, would you <laughs> or maybe or maybe the comic maybe the a- podcast would be, be useful. AI. Can, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you, you share it. the link, asshole? <laughs> right. <laughs> You're doing everything else for us. Shit. <laughs> Listen to that conversation. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, we're back into the episode. Would you can jump into it? Like I said, the first thing we want to talk about is that we do have confirmation that Sydney Sweeney is confirmed as Spider Woman. So. That's cool. Spider Woman. Spider Woman. Okay, so she's Spider Woman in the Madam Web movie. If that's that what sense. I was confused on. I'm like, that's damn, what's confused that's, on. So she's not. She's playing Madam Web. I'm like, <laughs> but when I tell you she's playing Madam Web, you're gonna be just as confused. Okay. Okay. The chick from uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Her. Right. I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> like another wow. hot chick. So they another are going chick. for like the Jilf. Thing. Right, they're not going for eighty or ninety year old, you know, Titanic chick and shit like that. No, yeah. they're going for young they're and not, hot. That's not, they is. don't want no, yeah, they don't want no geriatric old lady. They want some, right, yeah, no, 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 this, bang, bangable hot chick. To- <laughs> right, this is what they want. So, so everybody thinking she's playing Madam Web. No, she's not playing Madam Web. She's playing, and not the first Spider Woman. The second Spider Woman is the one she's playing. You know, so she's not Jessica Drew. Not Jessica Drew. She's Julia Carpenter. That was the one. That was if you read Secret Wars, that was her. Which secret war? Shit. The old okay. One? The right. The, the, <laughs> the old I one. forgot. I forgot. Yeah. The one from the 80s. The first one from the 80s. Yeah. Uh, which spider woman? Julia Jackson? Gwynn just oh, this guy knows his shit. Shout out to Jackson Daniels. Uh, we just said to Jackson, she's playing Julia. She's playing Julie Carpenter. Not Gwen Stacy or Jessica. What am I talking about? Is that me? There we go. Okay. Um yeah, but the thing is, now that every now that Sydney Sweeney has been confirmed, because we've been having rumors like last year, stuff like that, and that's been confirmed. Now every news site and article and website has just been just posting thirst traps, just left and right, just trying to get everybody's attention and shit like that. You know, uh, who is lucky this for, chick? Damn. Yeah, oh, lucky for know. us, we're above that. We're a family show, so we don't do shit like that. You know, <laughs> so just saying. I don't know who she is, but God bless. Google you. her, but make sure a safe search is on. I don't want you to catch a virus or anything like that. You know. <laughs> you or your computer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Google her it sounds fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Get, just ask AI. Just ask the AI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let me say it now. Here's the thing, Eli. You know, we never talk about rumors. We all talk about what's confirmed, what's happening, what's happening right now. What's going to We never talk about rumors. But now, let's indulge ourselves. Let's indulge ourselves in the rumor. One rumor. We're going to do one rumor. We're never going to talk about another rumor again because I'm pretty sure this rumor is complete bullshit. Uh, hey, good morning, lads. Jake, what it do? Jakey Pooh. Uh, yeah, so here's the rumor Dazzler, 
Oh, who got? Oh it? shit! And Fat T's in the house. Look at this. And Fat house, T, Fat T is finally here. Wow. Look at okay. him. He's on time. <laughs> He's on time. All right, let's get to it. Let's go to it. So, like I said, so the rumor is because first off, Deadpool three, everybody has just made up their Deadpool three is supposed to be the greatest movie of all time. Basically, everybody is going to be in it. Uh, Magneto, Ultron, Scarlet Witch, Jean Grey, Quicksilver, Batman. Superman, Batman, the Ninja Turtles. Everybody's going to be in this motherfucker, according to them. So, uh, but Sub also, Zero, you're Scorpion. right, Scorpion, <laughs> <laughs> Ken yeah, Reeves, Mario, Mario, Sonic. Mario going to be a Sonic. Everybody's going to be in this shit. John Wick Zelda, is going to be in this Link. shit. So, <laughs> Peacemaker, Darth be Vader. In this shit. You're right. <laughs> Uh, so, they, so everybody's supposed to be in this shit according to the internet because the internet is never wrong however this rumor right here I'm like okay this shit happened because not only is Dazzler supposed to be in this movie you know the most useless X-Man there is Dazzler's being in it but guess who's cast as Dazzler oh that's how long you've been off the internet Eli okay it, it, right. Idris, well, Idris L I don't it just, <laughs> don't know. It's so because it's, it's a bell time. Uh, oh, X23 supposed to be in it. <laughs> She's it like 25 Elba. now. X so yes. <laughs> uh no doubt. Oh, the girl, the girl from the from Logan. Bro, from Logan, Logan. Yeah, she's supposed to be in it. Now. She's like 20 something now. So she, she's supposed to be in it. So yeah. Uh oh. it, uh Taylor Edgerton, the dude, the dude that uh played Kingsman. He's in it. Oh, supposedly. oh that guy. That yeah. Guy. Okay. All bullshit. I'm just saying, like he's he's rumored to be in it. He's supposed to be. The Wolverine variant gonna fight Wolverine, so okay, whatever. Anyway, all these rumors are bullshit, but this rumor is the bullshittiest of the bullshits because apparently the person that's supposed to be playing Daz, the person cast as Dazzler, is Taylor Swift. Oh no shit! Taylor Swift is supposed to be a Deadpool three. Taylor Swift is gonna be an X Man. <laughs> now, normally I'm like these rumors are bullshit, man. I heard the rumor about Scarlet versus Jean Grey. I don't give a fuck about this shit. But this rumor here, I'm like, what? Because here's the thing. If Ryan Reynolds is crazy enough to make Taylor Swift an X-Man, this movie is guaranteed a billion dollars. Easy. Easy. Out the door. I suppose. Even if she's in it for five seconds, it doesn't matter. Taylor Swift is an X-Man? That's it. I'm good. Bill and Till. Bill and uh, <laughs> it. They might be. Shit. <laughs> Neo, Macy, everybody key on the play. Like, dude from Speed, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's the thing. Because here's the thing. Taylor Swift and I didn't know how I didn't know how big Taylor Swift is. I didn't know until I just ventured into TikTok and I see all these Taylor Swift versus Michael Jackson things. Like who's the bigger bigger artist? I'm like, wait, what? Michael Jackson had people <laughs> passing out at his concerts just by looking at them. I've never seen I've never seen anybody pass out from Taylor Swift looking at them. If if, if this happened, please let me know. Please send me that link because I've never seen that shit well, happen. Well, hey, Jake. Jake is showing his age, so. Oh, see, Jake is, is that, fight is that, does, that shit. does Jake pass out from Taylor? Jake, Swift? would you pass out <laughs> if Taylor Swift looked at you, just hauled off in in an ambulance, just like I got to get the fuck out of here, I can't do it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie's yeah. gonna be Deadpool. Kill. Actually, I think that is the movie Deadpool Kill, which we've already called that. So yeah. Uh, but that's my thing. Like I said, because basically, what's gonna happen? All of her fans are going to flock to this movie. And they're just going to take selfies of themselves as whatever <laughs> thing that Taylor Swift cosplay herself as. They're going to go in the movie. They're going to take selfies while the movie is going on. I'm watching Deadpool. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to be Barbie all over again. That's what I'm saying. Because that's why Barbie got because Barbie got the same thing. It was a whole bunch of people just went there just to take selfies, go into the movie, and then they asked about the movie. What you think about the movie? Eh, whatever. I got to see Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the whole thing so it's gonna be the same thing taylor swift gonna be all over again so taylor swift is going to be the biggest thing the x-men have ever seen if they decided to enter uh cast didn't make a billion dollars did it oh really huh i never saw cats i wouldn't me neither i i get we're part of the problem that's that's the thing but was <laughs> but didn't cats come out during covid so maybe that's why spider-man did too well, i think it came out the same time as spider-man <laughs> But no, but cats came out like at the beginning of the lot. Oh, like 2020, yeah. like right yeah. in the in, in the thick of it. Yeah. No. N not Spider Man came out when everyone was sick of being inside and they needed to right. get out. Right. And then went outside and then got sick again. So yeah. And then got sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. Cats was like smack dab in that shit. Yeah. So 2020. Um and let me see. Oh, but the thing is, 
Now, remember, for those who don't know about Dazzler, Dazzler actually has a long history of Marvel. She was actually supposed to be the first Marvel movie ever. Dazzler. Yeah. Back in the 70s. And guess who they were going to cast as Dazzler? Donna Summers. No shit. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, because Dazzler, John Romita Jr. actually drew her as black at first. Dazzler was in black. The reason they changed her, because the toy company didn't want to sell a black toy. Mm. John Romita Jr. Did you say John Romita Jr.? Jr., yes. Your boy. Not my boy. I don't, I don't <laughs> fuck with him. <laughs> but shout out him for both. <laughs> Speaking of musical, The Warrior is supposed to be a musical. I heard uh, about that. I heard about yes. the Warriors musical. Oh, yeah, yeah. Donna Summit. Yeah, basically, Dazzler was a disco queen. That was her thing. She was a disco queen. So yeah. she was going to be the disco queen at the time. So they basically, they mimicked Donna Summers, Diana Ross, Grace Jones. You know, she was going to be one of them. So that was the whole thing. Uh, yeah, that's all we got from that. So can we move on to the nitty gritty to meet other podcasts? Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Let's go. Okay. Like I said, I saw a movie. I just saw the movie, even though everybody else has saw the movie except us ahead of time. The reason I didn't see this movie because I was watching Barbie. So technically <laughs> and Barbie Oppenheimer. Heimer. And I'm Heimer. <laughs> Barbenheimer. That's when it came out at the same time. So yeah, this movie is They Clone Tyrone. That's the movie we're talking about right now. Oh, um, like I said, it took uh, this movie came out, I guess, three weeks ago. Like I said, the first week was Barbenheimer. Second week was I think Secret Invasion, but I didn't want to like lump them all together. Last week we took a vacation. Now we're here. So that's where we are right now. So yeah. So this is the movie, Day Clone Tyrone. We're going to talk about it. Now, I watched this movie and I was just going to review it by myself and that's what I'm talking about it. But after watching it, I was like, wait a minute. I might need some assistance, some help on this one. That's why I asked Eli if he could watch the movie also because I need some fresh eyes other than mine because coming away from this movie, I don't know how to review it. I don't know how to review it as Siskel and Ebert, even the Roper put on my, you know, cinematography hat on, you know, or should I put on my Dr. Umar FBA, you know, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock hat on. Which one should I do? I don't know which one. <laughs> do them, so, put them all on, man. Put them all on. Just, just like, <laughs> what hat this way, what hat that way. It's going to be the most confusing one ever. <laughs> All right, so that's why I wanted to get some fresh eyes. I gotta think like maybe I'm I'm too close to this this uh this movie. Uh, they cloned you. Actually, I was gonna talk about that. Okay, now where did the concept of this movie? They didn't clone Jamie Foxx. That's a, a bullshit. But however, I think that they got the idea from this movie because black people have a long history of assuming that people have been cloned. Conspiracy theories, you know. Black conspiracy theories, people get cloned all the time. For instance, Exhibit A. Uh, where is he? Tupac Shakur. Okay. Now, Tupac Shakur, the reason we think he's cloned is because he died and kept making music about shit that was going on that was relevant. I know it's a Dave Chappelle sketch, but the shit, he really did that shit. For instance, I want everybody to go listen to the first album he made after he died. Machiavelli came out seven days after he died. When you listen to the very first thing on that first song, Tupac says, or somebody says, Suge shot me. That's what he said. That's what he said seven days after he died. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. <laughs> Conspiracy theory, go ahead, what you're going to do. That's why people keep thinking that Tupac is alive in Bermuda doing some shit right now. Uh, Tupac, there we go. Tupac never died. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm about to go a little bit more obscure on this one. This is some deep one that most people don't really know about. Oh, not that one. But that's what we're talking about. They clone Tyrone. The movie I'm going to talk about is Gucci Mane. A lot of people don't know who Gucci Mane is. We know who Gucci Mane is. Gucci Mane is a rapper. Uh, went to jail because he shot somebody and made a song about him shooting a guy. I think the name of the song was "I Shot a Guy at 4 P.M. on Thursday." Or some shit. Whatever. Point is, he went to jail, and but he went to jail looking like this. But he came out of jail looking like this. What the fuck? And y'all want to tell me that that's the same guy? Now, I'm not believing in conspiracy theories like that. But hey, yeah, how long all, was he in jail, though? <laughs> like two years or some shit? You know, come on. That's that's a big change for like two years. Up, or maybe longer than that. I can't remember how long hey, ago. Hey, just... Fat T. We're Fat T. <laughs> <laughs> fat T. We didn't used to call him Fat T. <laughs> uh, it's fat, fat T. Are you a clone? Let us know right now. Blink twice if you're a clone. <laughs> you <know? laughs> they clone Fat T. That's a if Fat T didn't go away for that long. 
But when he came out, he wasn't Fat T. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he had abs and shit, everything like that. Okay, this ain't Fat T right here. This ain't Fat T. <laughs> he was little T. <laughs> <laughs> now, and also what we're going to talk about right here, Jamie Foxx. Like I said, Jamie Foxx. Now, for people who don't know what happened to Jamie Foxx, Jamie Foxx has gotten a situation where we thought Jamie Foxx had died. We didn't know what the fuck was going on with that. He finally made an actual like video on Instagram, some shit like that. He looked different. He looked different. Of course, because we don't know what happened to him. He never said, but he looked different in the video. And the first thing everybody said, they cloned Jamie Foxx because that's the first thing we always go to. They clone this guy. They clone that guy. They clone Michael Jackson. He's black now. You know, all this shit like that. So, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> damn, Fat Tia clone. That's messed up. Oh, <laughs> uh, only got to watch halfway. Got way it needed to make some time to, man, got one to break down things. Yeah, that y'all trying to spoil. Oh, we're going to spoil the fuck out of this Jack Daniel. Sorry about that. Because <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> Hell, I spoil shit for Eli. He ain't even seen it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I saw uh, so, oh, yeah, oh, so, but like in general, yeah. He's in general, still, yeah. Just not yeah, the movie, just like, in general. Yeah. Leroy will see shit that I haven't seen, and he'll just spoil the shit out of it. And I'll review it. Too. I'll right. And review it anyway, because you don't just, have to see just shit based on what he says. <laughs> <laughs> and nine of ten, you're right. That's the thing about it. So we why you're like, see, I knew that shit happened. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh what are we talking about? Okay, so like I said, that was my conspiracy theory hat. I'm taking off this conspiracy theory hat now, going back to the actual movie, uh talking about the movie. Because the thing is, this movie takes a lot of inspiration from other things, other projects, other movies, other TV shows, things like that. Uh, one of them is Scooby Doo. You know, they mentioned it plenty of times in it because the main thing is this movie is a detective story, it's a mystery, oh. this thing like that. What, what about the, you, the James Gunn Scooby Doo? Not James, just the concept. <laughs> yeah, oh, I did not. Okay. But I was about to because get it was a similar. It was so, something similar, the similar concept where they were trying to bring yeah, they thought the it was, or whatever. That, that shows up a lot. I'm gonna talk about that too. Also, <laughs> another thing talks about that is X Files. This is very much an X Files yeah. X Files episode. Eli, I was a huge X Files fan. I love. Yeah, and you can was, you can was, see yeah. the influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, don't believe people. Uh, papers one killed off Sinbad back. Sinbad's still alive. Oh, uh, don't believe people die in papers. Oh, they say they they killed Sinbad. The the papers killed Sinbad. Came back, had to come out and say he was dead. So, gotcha. Okay. People do say that stuff. Yeah. Uh, another thing, another influence on this one, Twilight Zone. It is very much Twilight Zone. Now, the thing is, people saying, like, oh, this reminds me of a Jordan Peele movie or something like that. Well, first off, Jordan Peele did a movie about cloning. I don't know if people were paying attention to us. That was the plot of yeah. us cloning, yeah. you know. Also, Jordan Peele, like, uh, likes, he, he is very much influenced by Twilight Zone, just like this show is influenced by Twilight Zone. So, this is what well, you he got. hosted it too. And he hosted it also. So, yeah. So that's what's going on with uh, they clone Tyrone. Also, people are noticing like a black exploitation feel to it. People don't know what time this show or uh, the movie happened, uh, and that's the, I think that's the whole point of it because the point is that they want you to basically they want you to understand that this is in a different multiverse, alternate world. This isn't the real world. They want you to understand it's like a different yeah. concept, but it's it's daytime. But yes, everybody has like. The time period could be for anywhere because they want to remind you of black exploitation. Because the main thing, if you watch black exploitation movies, the heroes of all of those movies were drug dealers, pimps, and prostitutes. All of them. Superfly, the Mac, Fox they Brown prostitutes. They were social, yeah. they were making social commentary. Right. They were making social commentary on them. That that because and those were our heroes of those stories. I don't know. A lot of people had a problem with the hero of this movie being pimps, drug dealers, and, and prostitutes, stuff like that. But that was the whole point of the movie. Because they were showing you that they can be the hero of the story, even though we but normally low, look at it was, it was it was classism. Class, it was like classism. The lower class, right. you know, the the poverty stricken lower class, basically rising up, rising above. Right. You know, so and the whole point is that they didn't want to do this; they were just forced to do this, and they yeah. literally were forced to do this. That's the whole point of the of the movie. Yeah. Uh, well, Shaft was that's a right. Shaft was a private detective, but yeah, but well, Shaft was a Shaft was a yeah, he was he was a cop, but like Superfly, Superfly, Foxy was a, Brown, was a, and and Coffee. I mean, yeah, Superfly drug dealer, Foxy Brown, Coffee. They were prostitutes. That's the yeah. point they were trying to do. They were prostituting and finding out the main drug dealers, then shooting them, killing them. That's what they were doing. So yeah, all the Dolomite movies. <laughs> <laughs> Dolomite was everything. Pimp, <laughs> drug dealer, whatever you want to be. That was that Kung was Dolomite. Fu Master. Kung Fu Master. <laughs> you rat suit eating motherfucker. 
Uh, so yeah, so that's the thing about that. Um, what is going on with the movie? So those are the, the influences of the movies going on. So that's why it reminds you of a black exploitation movie. Uh, even though Jamie Foxx, who I love in this movie and killed it in this movie, uh, mm-hmm. everybody was trying to figure out where he got it from, and I was realizing, oh, Jamie Foxx is just playing Morris Day. That's all. <laughs> that's that's it. That's all he was doing. But he still killed it. He killed it in there. Everybody killed it. I just love everybody's dynamic in there. Just uh. How everybody bounced off each other. They had this Monica, a great Monica Rambo. Yeah, Monica, Tiana Paris. Yeah, she, oh, she's throwing everything she do. So, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, dope. And, yeah. I'm... John, Bo- John Boyega kills again. John Boyega has been putting in some great performances lately. So, uh, Superfly is still one of the greatest endings to a flick. You better not touch her hair on my pretty head. Or whatever he said. <laughs> it. I think, I think that's what Superfly said in that one. Uh, so, yeah, that's the thing. So, let's get into the movie. Let's talk about the movie. now. Okay, now I'm putting my, back, my other hat on. I'm putting another hat on right now. Okay. So we got to talk about the movie. Because the thing is, this movie is not about cloning at all. The movie is not about cloning. They threw that in there, but it's not about it. The movie is actually about brainwashing, programming, indoctrination. Here's the thing, Eli. This The movie is about everything that I've been saying for like forever. I mean, I say it on this podcast, but if you check me on any other social media platform, I say this same shit all the time. How they are, we are influenced, black people in general are influenced by the things we see. We're influenced by our music, influenced by our food, influenced by the church, uh, influenced by commercials and TV shows, influenced by uh, our uh, uh, hair products and things like that. Because, yeah. because all those things influence us. And, yeah. like fans, when we talk about rap music, uh, it's gonna kill this year. That's my boy right here. B Sky. What's up? That's my boy. <laughs> we go back. <laughs> All right. So let's think about this. So we're going to talk about rap music for a second. Now, we talk about how rap music has been brainwashing us and make us think these things like that. It was funny that they had a scene in the movie where they were playing aggressive rap music and the guys instantly started fighting. And then when they switched the music to something else to like something slow, they started, you know, they started relaxing with each other. Shit, yeah. And we've yeah. seen this in the movie. Like we've seen this in, in real life whenever we at a club. And they're playing, I don't know, 3-6 Mafia or some shit like that. I bet you won't hit a motherfucker. What happens? You hit a motherfucker. You play the song, Tear the Club Up. What do you do? Tear the Club Up. It's like the music is directly influencing you and things like that. Uh, So what do we got here? Uh, Influence, conditioning, go hand in hand. Yeah. So people keep thinking it's about cloning. It's not about cloning. That's some old dumbass conspiracy shit theory we're not going to talk about right now. This is actually about indoctrination. This, and we can we can talk about the uh the Tuskegee projects also, the Tuskegee experiments, where they did experiment on black people and gave them syphilis, making them think they were doing something else. We can talk about what they did in the past. Yeah. Let's talk about what they're doing now. Everything is influenced by because, like I said, all this rap music we're putting on right now, happy 50th anniversary to hip hop. But all the top executives over rap music right now, none of us look like this. They don't. <laughs> The guys, the guys that sign all these people, they don't. So they are the ones controlling the music that we see. We got to pay attention to it. Like I said, I'm not. Let me take my head off you. I'm taking my head off. <laughs> I think I'm going too deep into it. So that's the whole point. I'm trying to get into it when I saw this movie. I was like, everything this movie is saying is the same stuff I've been saying the entire time. Just like when we talk about church, every church has a white Jesus in it. Every black church has a white Jesus in it. You know, and they're using that to control and program. Well, right that's now. religious conversion. That that's li- right. religious. That's colonization. I mean, that's right. Natives relate to that too. I mean, that's right. what happened to us as well. And um, but but you're right. This is very much a satire on, mm-hmm. um. And I, I don't think it just applies to black people. I think it applies to like like again. I go back to classism, because yeah, right. the food, the food. I mean, that food. We eat this unhealthy food because we can't afford healthy food. Right, and, and where do we all these places go? And where is every Popeyes? Or chicken, or church's chicken, you or know, just is that fast food, fast food, or in fast general, food restaurant? Like, you never yeah. see this in upper class yeah. neighborhoods. You don't see that stuff. Yeah, there. you can get, yeah, you can get a cheeseburger for a dollar. You know, right. where you know, fruit and vegetables cost way more than that. Right, it's whole just, foods just, and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, it's just so much cheaper. You, you're to not going to see a whole unhealthier. foods in the hood. You're not. Yeah, it's it's you know, you know the you know the hair product you know the whole thing with the hair products. It's like we've bought into this westernized standard of beauty right and you know where all all us people of color try to you know live up to these like non-colored standards of beauty now now, to be honest with you i'm not going to go too hard on the hair products thing 
because I kind of get it. Because, like I said, Western civilization has a certain standard of, of beauty. Yeah. Like I said, if uh, black women wearing their hair out just naturally, you might can't even get a job and feed yourself if you go to an interview with, with your just natural hair, you know. So at a point, it's almost like survival, you know, to do certain things you got to have. And, yeah. and, and I get it, you know, that's just, and that, and that, that's just that, the way we yeah. live in. You know? That ties into that. That's that yeah. they just, it's like this, this, you know, culture is forced upon, you know, the lower classes and forcing them to exist, you know, where usually they wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? You know, right. So, or just like yeah. we talk about the, the, the beauty standards just in general, like, of course, Margot Robbie is supposed to be the beauty standard of the world because that's, you know, that's Western civilization standard of beauty, you know, not, yeah. you know, Rihanna, who I think is the baddest motherfucker of all time. That's just me, you yeah. know, but or, they want to say or Monica Rambeau or Monica Rambeau. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, <laughs> whatever her name is. I can't. <laughs> she's Monica to me, but <laughs> right. You know, they you like know. that or, or, or uh, Misty Knight, that chick. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah 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 that's what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> but, but no no we gotta we gotta taylor swift taylor swift is the beauty standard you know that's yeah. what we're supposed to accept you know sorry jake sorry <laughs> we didn't mean to shit on your queen <laughs> you know <laughs> just say it uh but yeah, but yeah I, so that, I took yeah. yeah i took this as very much like a sat like like you said like an exploitation movie like it was making right. social commentary but it was also a satire on how you know, we buy into things. We buy into the internet. We buy into what goes viral. We have to pay attention right. to this thing this week because that's what everybody's talking about. And we have to, right. we have to, we have to have an opinion about it. We have to comment on it because that generates revenue. Because right. you know, and then and next it just week keeps we move us, on to the next thing. Yeah, and then we, we don't really give a shit. Week. We get right. outraged at each other. We get all hung up, and you know, because they do swap. it on purpose. Oh, yeah. such and such. Uh, Leslie Jones is playing Superman, you know, yeah. and now we just yeah. all up in your arms and shit we like that, you know, squabbling, oh, squabbling about stupid petty shit that in the that in the big, bigger, bigger scheme of things don't really mean shit, but we right. make it take so much of our time, you know, right. and they know um, how to trigger us. That's the thing. Yeah. Us, it, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Doja Cat, <laughs> BDB standard. Y'all love some damn Doja Cat, man. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, that, that's my thing about this movie. So, like I said, it was funny, Jamie Foxx, but it actually has some like yeah. serious, heartfelt most on it. But yes, it is very, very much a satire. I think that's what kind of throws people off that it's a satire. They expecting it, okay, when does this take place? Okay, how is this related to us? Like, no, it's it's a make-believe world. That's the whole point. Yeah. This is this is this is black surrealism. That's the new term is called black surrealism. Uh, and that's the thing of what we're calling black sci-fi nowadays. This is what Jordan Peele does, like I said, this is uh what Black Panther did, you know, Afrofuturism, things like that. This is what da uh, Donald Glover tried to do with Atlanta in the fourth season. But I think at that point, he kind of jumped the shark and people weren't ready to go that way. No, we want realistic black shit. We don't want you to go into that next realm and, you know, make us seem like yeah. we're not in a real world. Because that's what he was trying to do. He was trying this, uh, in the very last episode of Atlanta, he had the same thing about how the food was influencing us. He was trying to bring a black sushi store to the hood, a mm -hmm. sushi restaurant to the hood. Nobody want to fuck with it because nobody wants to fuck with a sushi restaurant in the hood. It devalues the sushi restaurant. So we're just going to yeah. go with KFC. Now, if it was in an upscale restaurant, that same sushi restaurant, we'd fool with it, you know? So this is the thing he was trying to say. You know, me not right now. It was a great movie and well thought out for this player. Uh, yeah, it was very much. It was very much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was so. poke. Yeah, it was poking the fun goofy episode. Yeah. I love that episode. And that, but that's the thing. It's like Donald Glover went too far with it. I, I was on board with him. I was on board with him. But a lot of people kind of jumped off the train with him on that one. So, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, this was yeah, it was hilarious. I was I was laughing a lot. Um, yeah, I thought and, and, Fox and that's it. the yeah. thing. Now, if it was just preaching us the whole time and it wasn't funny and it wasn't giving us something, then I would have checked out. But the po point was. It was entertaining. The message always is the movie to begin with. So as long yeah. as I'm entertained, you can you can do you can throw these messages in there. Yeah, I, I thought it was it was such an outlandish idea that it you know that you just had to laugh you know. Right. Um, and it was just like I said, it was just poking fun at you know how we are just yeah how we are influenced by these material things you know. Right. Um, 
and influenced and yeah. by everything, everything around us. You know. Yeah. And um, I thought it reminded me, what's that movie, Sorry to Bother You? Is that what it's called? Yes, that's another uh, Afro uh, surrealism movie. Yeah, kind of reminded me of that. Kind of reminded me of Black Dynamite in a way. Not as campy as Black Dynamite. I mean, but, but, but that's because it's because Black Dynamite is also black exploitation satire, which this is also. Yeah. So yeah, that's where but you that whole, see that. Yeah. That whole thing with the malt liquor and Black Dynamite. It's, yeah. Oh, shit. It's the same damn plot. It was the same damn plot. <laughs> you write about that, drink, The great drink and shit. Okay, I'm about to hit you with an old one. I'm about to hit you with an old one. You brought up uh, Black Dynamite, Undercover Brother. Oh, yeah. The same plot. The same plot. Some people even say this was Undercover Brother 2. <laughs> it was the same thing. They put stuff in the chicken. They was using Billy D. Williams to sell us chicken that they could control us with. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's just funny how oh, Boondocks, Boondocks made an episode about this. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Which is another one they went into with all this. But since it was a cartoon, you could go there and people would yeah. go with you on there because it's a cartoon, you know. Oh, but yeah, yeah, Boondocks did all this stuff. So, yeah, we got all kind of like black sci-fi, Afro-surrealism, Afro-futurism type shows that delve into almost these same exact topics almost every time. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. I, I wish, I want to see more of this, you know. I don't want everybody back to compete. To, uh, I don't want to yeah. be, you know. Yeah, back to, um, you know, the whole thing about people dying, like Elvis, and people were thinking Elvis was alive for like how many years and all this tabloid magazine Elvis spotted here. Yeah, I Elvis spotted, spotted Elvis spotted with this. Bigfoot. And, yeah. Yeah, Elvis and Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster on, on camera. Or whatever, right. You know? And then they made that movie Boba Hotep where Bruce Campbell plays Elvis and he's in a retirement home and they fight him. Oh, he's still alive. Because, okay. Yeah. 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 He's still, he's, yeah. He's, he's, Elvis is in a retirement home and he fights a mummy. It's a stupid, campy, dumbass movie. But yeah, it, it, it leans into those conspiracy theories and kind of pokes fun at all that shit. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean th that that's what this reminded me of. Like a lot of those kind of, you know, yeah, black exploitation, exploitation, kind of campy satires, yeah. just poking. And that fun was the at, point. At, you at, can you definitely know. tell the influence on it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's the whole point. I just want to make sure that people understand that the movie is not about cloning. It's not. It was amazing what they were doing is cloning like their jobs, their skill set. Like, okay, one pimp dies on the on the corner. Put another pimp out there put another drug dealer out there it wasn't that same guy just as long as there's another and it's just like it is in real life you shoot one drug dealer it'll be another one in the corner next week that's because that's how the system is set up but yeah yeah um it, it leaves a vacuum oh shit are you i'm i'm here i'm here <laughs> i think you're gone uh oh he's about to go oh well that's okay i'm still here or one of us back that's it so I think he froze up, but that's all. We're going to keep talking. All right. So that's my whole thing about that, because the thing is about cloning is that they're talking about cloning this same job title. And then notice that they didn't clone uh, Tiana Paris because they didn't care to clone her. They were like, there's so many of you. We could just replace you at any time and nobody would even notice you're gone. That's that's how little they value her. Meanwhile, the other one, like the pimp and the drug dealer, they want to make sure there was a pimp and drug dealer at, at all time because they know that the pimp and drug dealer are only going to do those things to their own neighborhood. They're not, okay, you got some that are, you know, high class and go out there like that. But like a, a dude that robs, he's not going to go out and rob a, a upscale mansion, a $200,000 mansion. He's not going to do that because he know they even running, going into that mansion. That's the first thing to decide. He got out. He'll be back. Don't worry about it. Uh, so that's why they know that they, they keep everything in a controlled environment. They know what they're doing. I'm going to talk about Ronald Reagan. Ah, damn, I'm really going to. I'm, hopefully, Eli will come in and stop me because now I'm going to go on a rant right now. Hold on. Is this him? Hold on. Let's see. He's still out. There you go. All right. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Are, are you here? Are you back? Are, are you? I never back. left. I was here the whole time. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you came in because I was just about to start talking about Ronald Reagan. <laughs> so I'm glad you're back before we get off subject. <laughs> No, you disappeared, then everything just disappeared. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was here the whole time. I was here the whole time. All right. Oh, what, okay. what, what, what would you say about Pop, Pop Smoke? Uh, still be smoking. Okay, Pop Smoke made like three songs, all them songs, and all of them are remixes with 50 Cent. So we, we can't count Pop Smoke, but yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I've heard remixes of Tupac, this and Eminem and shit. I'm like, okay, I know this. He didn't do that shit for real, but yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that's all I gotta say. But what like I said, I said in. No, I, I was in the middle of saying something, and then when I got cut off, and now I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see if I could drag, jog your memory. <laughs> yeah. um, crap.
crap, the, the signal's low again. Am I here? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you sit here. Yeah. Okay. He's fading. Yeah. Okay, because you froze. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, who was I going to say? I mean, yeah, I know, know I know, I, I watched a lot of X in the danger zone. I watched a lot of X-Files and they had a lot of cloning and stuff like that on there. But yeah. um, but no, what I was, okay, this is what I was going to say. There was that one moment where um, Monica or whatever her name was. What was mm -hmm. her name? The, 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 uh, Monica. In, in the movie. What yo -Yo. is her real yeah. name? Tiana Pear. Yo-Yo. Yeah, her. In the movie, Yo-Yo. Her name okay. was yo <laughs> <laughs> Where she was, uh, she was, um, talking about how how she basically they're talking about their dreams how they she wanted to go here and wanted to you know become a detective and she they, basically how they all had dreams right and how they never and you know she wanted to go sailing all the stuff like that, that so yeah yeah and he had dreams and all that stuff they're just basically talking about how they're stuck you know stuck in their environment you know stuck mm -hmm. in their poverty stuck and that's that's kind of the point of the whole movie is how we get stuck, you know, in this, in the underclass trying to, you know, and it's hard, how hard it is to get out of it because of all these influences, because of how we let these influences control us and dictate right. our lives, you know, and that's what they do. They end up saying, oh shit, you know, fuck all that shit. We're not going to follow. We're going to be what they want us to be. And that's basically the mess. Right. You don't have because to get distracted are... by Facebook and get caught up in, you know, Right. Because the thing yeah, is, there are guys out there, you know, that are better than Michael Jordan and LeBron James, but they can't make it out because of shit that happened. Maybe drugs, maybe they got yeah. shot, maybe whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, they're stuck in a situation. They, you know, and it that that's I think that that's that to me, that was the message of the movie. Of it, it's trying to break out of the stagnant environment that you're in, you know. Right. Um, like you yeah, changed the, the it. And notice how they the changed it was that, they all, you know, the, yeah. Yeah. I, I was saying yeah, like they that, all the get, way they, they changed all band it, they together. all banded together and did yeah. it. it wasn't just, I'm just going there by myself to do it because yeah. that won't work at all. <laughs> but when you band yeah. together, like then you can all, make some changes. We all have to free our minds. We all have to start rethinking and, you know, basically, uh, you know, become, what's the word? Like sort of engage a new consciousness you know yeah rethink you know let let go of what influences us and you know unlearn what we learn and but you know free your mind your ass will follow but basically <laughs> you know i'm trying to get I, I appreciate all, you not saying woke what, yeah <laughs> it yeah. sounded like that's what you were trying to say but yeah. i was trying to say I'm trying like i'm trying to, how do i say woke without saying woke you know? <laughs> yeah but, but but i mean it just goes beyond that you know just I'm a Virgo. not not I haven't. It's oh, on no, Amazon, I, I have but I haven't that. ever. That's a little bit. It seems like it's too weird for me. I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, not getting caught up in the bullshit. Basically, I think yeah. that's what that's what this is. You know, we get caught up in the bullshit. We get caught up in pettiness, and you know, and it's hard. To, it's it's hard to get out of it. You know, um, and this this is just a fun sci-fi flick that sort of poked fun at it all. You know. So it sort of makes us look at ourselves and see what we're actually doing. You know? Right. And what we can do. Like I said, if we won't band together yeah. and, and, you know, and, and I do like yeah. it how that when, when both of them realized what was really going on, they couldn't go back to the lives they were before. Once they finally, mine yeah. were free. I, I can't pimp anymore. I just let the girls go do whatever. I can't sell drugs yeah. anymore. They can't do what they did before. I mean, uh, it's a, it's a saying, I can't, I think Frederick Douglass said it like, uh, uh, a slave that knows he's a slave can't will never be a slave or something. No, no, no. no. I'm okay. pretty sure I, I screwed I, that up. But yeah. let me let me let me dip out real quick. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can, okay. While back. you going, I'm gonna talk about Ronald Reagan now. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, while uh, Eli's doing the thing, talking about Ronald Reagan. Okay. So everybody know about Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is basically the biggest drug dealer in American history. So what he did is that he basically funneled while he was doing the whole war on drugs thing. He was funding the war on drugs in Nicaragua. Okay, you back? Okay, cool. While he was funding the war on drugs in Nicaragua, uh, how he paid them? Because they were uh, fighting the Russians. So he paid them in guns, but they didn't have money to pay him back. So what did they do? They paid him oh, you're in talking cocaine. About Iran? Yeah, I'm or talking no, about I'm Ronald talking Reagan. About yeah, they paid him in okay. cocaine. That's how they did it. They paid him in cocaine. But at the same time, 
How do they make money off the cocaine? You send it to the hoods, send it to the ghettos, have them flip the money, make it for you. But make sure it doesn't go to the upper class neighborhoods. There's written document about this. It's not a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. It's out there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where the crack epidemic came from in the eighties. And they they only make it legal when they can when they can make money off. When they can make money off of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So Ronald was the best president. He was a beast. Oh, so shit. <laughs> that's 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 your boy Taylor Swift. Now, yeah, Ronald they, Reagan. They must have cloned Jake. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. Uh, let's see if we get she really tried to escape a bit of her rise. That makes his hand escape. Yeah, she really wanted to get out of out of out of there. So. Yeah. So all right. So well, yeah, I think I, mean, I, think, I, yeah. I think it plays on yeah conspiracy theorists and all that stuff and. Yeah, but I, and I think it plays a little bit too much conspiracy theory because I think. And that's the thing. I've read. I've seen a lot of reviews from like people online from this, and everybody's saying this, uh, a different thing. Some people are getting too deep into the conspiracy theory. That whole thing. See, just like they clone Jamie Foxx, they cloning people for real. Like, no, <laughs> they not. <laughs> you completely yeah. missed the message of the movie, but okay. Yeah, uh, like I, said, I used to watch the Snowfall. I I, 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 I got a buddy season. that swears by Snowfall. They, like it is literally the greatest yeah, I watched the show first season. ever made. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought it was all right. I never I seen finish it. it. I, I never seen it, but my buddy yeah. swears it's the greatest show I've made. So, yeah, but that's it. But yeah, I mean, for me, I think conspiracy theories. You know, I mean, I used to watch. Like I said, I watched a lot of X Files, and while fun right. they are, you know, I mean, like, right, but you take it seriously. Out, like, oh, they're telling us what's going on. They're giving us the red pill. You yeah, didn't think yeah, about it like that. You know, you it's it. it's just art. It's just entertainment, and it's fun. But I yeah. think you know, like what Alan Moore said. You know that that people like to w- would like to believe that. There's a con- there's some conspiracy controlling everything when in reality, mm-hmm. there's nothing controlling nothing. There's no one's in control. <laughs> just, just chaos. <laughs> like, That's all. It's just chaos, and it makes it, it it's it's it makes people feel better to pretend there's an Illuminati or the secret government or the right. you know aliens walk people among us and, and whatever. And yeah, yeah, lizard people. It's 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 mm-hmm. easy. It's 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 comforting, but in the end, there isn't, and the world is just total chaos. No one controls <laughs> nothing. And that you know, <laughs> but let's just say all that it's all true. Let's just say all the conspiracy theories are true. Nine eleven was a was was an inside job. COVID was a hoax. <laughs> Earth right. is flat. There's lizard people. <laughs> Elvis is alive. Let's say it's all true. What are you gonna do about it? Nothing. Right. <laughs> That's it. Elvis and Tupac make a song right now. What? Listen to it. That's all you can do. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Eli Lady Side Lizard person on plane last month. Oh, you mean that motherfucker's not real? You talking about that person? That wasn't even last month, that was like two weeks ago. I, I know what he's that. talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I know what he's talking about. It. It, it. It's funny. We don't know what she's saying. Some lady just got on a plane, and was like that motherfucker's not real. I thought it was like a secret invasion, like commercial or some shit. I guess it was whatever, but I don't know. Yeah, um, well, secret invasion plays into that. Secret invasion plays into that, yeah. Like you, nobody's yeah. real, everybody's fake. There really is a secret lizard people, Illuminati aliens, you know, living amongst us. You know, yeah. One out of three people yeah. is a scroll or an alien or some shit. So yeah. All right. So let me say, I think we talked about the movie enough. Can we can we move on? Sure. Okay. All right. So we're just gonna just briefly talk about this. This is what do we got next here? Oh, okay. We we'll talk about this one. Okay. So. There is a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game that has just been announced. This is for real because we heard rumors about it, but it's actually really, really, really happening right now. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin. Now, here's the thing. We review that entire comic on this podcast, The Last Ronin. Those who don't know what The Last Ronin is, basically three out of the four turtles are dead. That's it. One's left, trying to get revenge on the guy that killed everybody else. Splinter's dead. Casey Jones is dead. Everybody's dead. I'm not gonna tell you who's still alive. Just got to read the book to go go uh, go from there. And they so go get revenge a- in a post up in a post apocalyptic like New York City. Basically. Of course, because it's always <laughs> post apocalyptic. Of course, you know uh, yeah. this turtle uses all of the turtles' weapons, goes against everybody, fights everybody they went through. You know, and, and that's the thing I like that awesome story. It was I think both of our favorite stories of that year when it came yeah, out. Yeah, like, gr- I bought, bought I got the hardcover. I went and bought it on hardcover, yeah. and I I rarely do that. So. <laughs> right. So, like I said, we yeah. love the story. It was written by the original person that that uh, created the Ninja Turtles comic. So, like I said, yeah. and like I said, we love the comic. We love Ninja Turtles because if you if you think about it, and I just thought about this earlier today, like if you take apart Marvel and DC, the most successful comic book property is probably Ninja Turtles. I think. 
uh, yeah. maybe Walking Dead, maybe I, I don't I don't think as far as just popularity, you know, business wise. Yeah, I mean they made a cartoon. They're still they they just made another Ninja Turtle the, movie. Right, you know? we got a movie out right now. More movies, multiple more cartoons, TV series, toys, multiple, yeah, yeah, multiple toy lines, multiple TV series, multiple yeah shows, and yeah, it's it's just been this, you know, this huge thing since and the been 80s. around for almost forty years. Yeah, yeah, and they were and they uh, were have you ever create, and they were, it was independent. Yeah, I'm waiting. For I have Eli not to, seen it yet. I'm waiting. For I Eli. haven't seen it yeah. yet. Yeah, I want to see. It. I do want to see it, but I haven't seen it yet. Ah, uh, wait to play my plus. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be on the next month. But as uh, far as this game, it, I, it was just the trailer. It was they, just like they didn't really show a anything. They, they, they yeah. didn't really show anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's going to be sort of like a God of War made by the same company as God of War or whatever. Yeah, they would say it's going to be like a God of War type game, which I can I can see that you know. So we're going to yeah. do that one. So, so and plus it'll get people to experience that story because you know you know like i know a lot of people haven't read that story because we don't read at all so <laughs> so yeah so uh, now i want you to hold me to task Eli. i want you to hold me accountable that you know how i do those like long form reviews of what we've done like we've done like a whole book i need you to hold me accountable to make a last ronin version of that one because oh. we have we've done all of we've done it I just need to just splice together, put together, and just just run with. And those it. and those uh and those books came out like months apart, like almost wasn't yeah. it like a, almost a year between issues one time. Yeah, uh, well, Fatty, hopefully it's a good God of War, not the new God of War. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mega Fox and T. Damn, how many girls you got, Fox? He's a ninja <laughs> pimp. He's got right. all these Taylor Swift and Doja Cat and Mega <laughs> Fox. <laughs> like that. I, I love Mega Fox in the roles. I know everybody likes to shit on Mega Fox. I love Mega Fox in both those roles. So yeah. Uh, so that's my thing. So hold me to task now. Hold me accountable for that. Help help me get that done. Well, just remind me to get that done. Because I always say oh, I'm going to get it done, and then I just don't do it. I just sit up here and watch Netflix all day. I guess it so. would just be the hardest thing would probably be searching out which episodes it was. I've already found like, them. Like, oh, you I've found, already found okay. them? Well, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I've already found them. I've already found them. I've already listed them. I was like, I need to just. Chop this up and just go Chop with it. Chop it up. Yeah. yeah. And then and I start playing easy. Street Fighter. That's the easiest then, part. Yeah. No. That's the fun. It's not. Is it? You don't like editing? No. No. I mean, I do, but that shit is long. That was a long-ass book. Yeah. It's going to take some time, but I do it. I just need to stop I'm playing I'm sure Street it's going to be like an hour, like almost shit. an hour, too, you know. It probably will be, because every other one we yeah. did was an hour. So, yeah. yeah. But I can just start on it and like do it from days at a time. So yeah, I pace myself. I get it. Done. I'm, I'm gonna start on it. Reason, read. That's when I'm talking to you now to get me motivated to do it. Because if I just don't tell you, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna just like not do it. But if I, you can just remember, hey, we read that thing. You're supposed to do <laughs> my, my my reports. <laughs> where where my reports? You know. <laughs> All right. So let me say, we move on to next part of the podcast. Sure. Like I said, we're just flying through this. We're just going to it. Like I said, this is comic book bullies. We're talking about comic books, and we're just gonna jump into it. Uh, Eli, I'm gonna let you jump in first, and just I want to see which book. Why you do, do I? Yeah, I'm not, I'm I, always, gonna... I you always make me go first, and I'm never prepared. Because <laughs> I'm never prepared. I just have my shit on standby. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the video next week, Eli. Jake, I will not have this video next week, but I will start on it. How about that? I will start on it next week. That's something. So yeah. Yeah, that's uh, you know, you're okay. making a commitment. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, I guess I will start out with Ghost Rider and Wolverine number one. I read this. Um, yeah. Oh, you did. I did, but I'm not gonna step on your toes. Oh, uh, as I, I say, it. you would do it probably better. You would like really mm-hmm, get mm-hmm. It. go go with it's you. It's all you. It's all you. <laughs> but I'm gonna read this whole thing. I'm, I'm I'm on board with this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Benjamin Percy has been writing both Wolverine and Ghost Rider lately, I'm trying to catch up on uh, Wolver- the Wolverine series. Um, because I kind of dropped it for a while, but I have Gilmore been... and them said greatest Wolverine run of all time. I mm. don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but I have been reading Ghost Rider. Like his Ghost Rider run has been dope. Um, so basically, this is um we have some kid who has some kind of powers. Um, this woman. What's his name? Bram or something like that? Yeah, the kid's name is Bram. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's he's got some kind of powers. She brings him to Xavier's school for the mutants. Because um, she thinks he's think, a mutant. 
Yeah. They think she's he's a mutant. So he brings them to Xavier, and Xavier tries to read his mind, and that he gets all fucked up, and he's like, "I can't read it. Oh, oh my god, he's not a mutant. You know, <laughs> he's he. There's something else. You need to you need someone with a, a sorcerer or magic or somebody. Right. To, he's to, not a mutant. To, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, basically, he, he I, I can't I can't really help him. You know, he's not a mutant. So they leave. Um, meanwhile, yeah, Ghost Rider or Johnny Blaze is doing a stunt. Um, and he sees that is that the demon bear? That's what I was wondering. I hope not. I really hope not because it did look <laughs> like the demon bear. Yeah, it looked like a giant bear on fire. Which yeah, looked, like a ghost like rider demon, demon bear. bear. Yeah. Yeah. So while he's uh while he's does one of his stunts, he sees Mephisto and the demon bear, and he wipes out and almost gets possessed. Um, we cut back to the the kid. He's at another orphanage, um, and he like somehow kills all the kids and makes a yeah. fucked up Hellraiser sculpture out of like their body. Like totem pole of kids. I like yeah. this is fucked up, man. <laughs> yeah, like some kind of Hellraiser fucking sculpture, you know. <laughs> uh pretty, pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, and then we cut back. To, yeah, uh, the kid runs away or whatever. We cut back to uh, you know, uh Charles Xavier and and Logan, Wolverine is like. Something's up with that kid. We should probably check on him or whatever. Because he can smell you know? like sulfur and hellfire yeah. on him. Like, like yeah, there's something they, right with this kid. Yeah. Yeah. So he basically goes in to investigate. But while um while they're like the power goes out or something in the mansion, and mm-hmm. then the demon bear or something, like a big giant monster <clears> with a <throat> flaming bear head, like mm-hmm. appears. And um, at the same time. Johnny Blaze is in the hospital after wiping out from one of his stunts, and he's having visions of the demon bear. Like, like it Wolverine, happens at the same time, yeah. Yeah, Wolverine. Uh, yeah, Wolverine uh, fights fights. Uh, the oh, demon and that bear. bear fucks up Colossus too. Like, just yeah. throws him through walls and shit. Yeah. But then there's a scene where he's fighting the bear. I. And then it's like he's fighting the kid, like the kid, like the bear is inside him or something. No, 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 no. The kid is standing right there while the bear is there. So Wolverine slashes okay. the bear like, okay, I can't do shit with the bear. So Wolverine slashes the kid. Slashes the kid. And then the bear Yeah, gets and when hurt. he slashes the kid, the, the bear gets, gets fucked up. Yeah, and then the bear takes the kid and mm-hmm. then dips out. Like, yeah. And then Wolverine jumps on his motorcycle. Ghost Rider jumps on his motorcycle. And they all go riding off into the night. Um, they meet, they, they, they're basically heading to the same, like, uh, scene where the bear was and then they meet. And that's where, of course, we have the, the good old fashioned superhero misunderstanding fight. Right. So. Cause Wolverine <laughs> thinks that Ghost Rider is the demon that came and fucked up. So they, they got to yeah. fight. They got to fight. Yeah. So they got to fight. They throw down for a little bit and Hey, we're, we're after the same thing. We're, you know, we, you know, we, we should be friends and basically decide to team up, you know. So I do like how they had Ghost Rider kick his ass because there's no way Wolverine can go against Ghost Rider. Yeah. Well, even Ghost Rider says, like, you know, you you have a lot of evil or darkness in you, but you're not the evil I seek, you know. Mm-hmm. So if, if Wolverine, if, if Ghost Rider were to give him the penance there. <laughs> yeah. I do like that little narrative, that, narrative, that uh, uh, narration that Wolverine had. He like, because a lot of people consider me and Ghost Rider the same guy because Nobody knows if we're good or bad, and yeah, neither do yeah. we. You know, like they're, they're, they're anti heroes. You know. Yeah, that, yeah. So yeah, um, this whole book was yeah. It's 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 Logan narrating the book. It's it's, it's from his. No. It's oh, him, did you catch this memory. also? Okay, that woman that was uh that brought the the boy to Xavier. So uh-huh. she she adopted him, the boy, afterward, because okay. after he ran uh-huh. off, he was like, I, nobody can help me, so. She found him and she raised him. So when they went in their house, like Johnny Blaze and Logan went in their house, it was her house and there was pictures of him growing up. But yeah. he killed her. They found her dead body in that house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. I missed that. Shit. Yeah, because yeah, it goes back and forth between flashbacks and shit. So, mm-hmm. so, yeah. But they decide, Wolverine and Ghost Rider decide to team up to go search for this kid. Yeah, and that's kind of where it ends. So yeah, well, I've like I've been on board with Ghost yeah. Rider. Jackson, you're right because 
it's like Wolverine and Ghost Rider can both sense it, but they sense it different ways. Like Wolverine can sense it through his like senses, but Ghost Rider got that mystical shit. Like I can feel the evil or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's drawn to it. Yeah, yeah. He's drawn to the, the, yeah, the yeah, the evil, the evil's energy. Or the whatever. blood of the innocent. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um this was a four out of five for me. I've already been on Ghost Rider, Benjamin Percy's Ghost Rider run. I'm yeah. catching up on the Wolverine, his Wolverine run. So I've been reading both of these books. So I'm I'm gonna stick with this. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna five. read this arc. I'm, I'm still letting you take over. It's all you, but I'm going to keep up with the arc because the, 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 this book got me. I was like, okay, I'm on board now. You know, and yeah. plus Ghost Rider versus Wolverine. You know, I'm of course I'm gonna throw money at that. I want to <laughs> see that happen. <laughs> I'm a shield, just like everybody else. I mean, shit. Yeah. And then next month we got Wolverine versus the Predator. <laughs> there you okay. I'm on board for that. So shit. <laughs> what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> exactly. And we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna review that shit. So yeah. All right. Let me say what we're gonna talk about next. Okay, next book I'm going to do is think let's let's do since we're technically doing horror, let's do night terrors, number three. Oh, uh, you're doing night terrors. Check you I'm out. I'm doing night terrors. Here's the thing. I fell <laughs> off, but I didn't fall off, if it makes sense. <laughs> I know they don't make sense, okay? Because <laughs> I'm reading none of those tie-ins. I missed the last issue, but I'm doing this issue. Because here's the thing. Pun intended, people are sleeping on Night Terrors. Because oh. at the end of the day, it's just a, a dead man book. And I'm all for a dead man. Give me a dead man book. It's, it's so Are they cloning Tyrone you? <laughs> <laughs> I've been indoctrinated. Yeah, are you? Are they? I hated are, it are first. They, and... Are they getting you? Are they? They? They got you. They. <laughs> they're controlling Consume, you, Leroy. Obey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Uh, they live is definitely an influence on the movie. I can tell. Yes, yeah. they live. Yeah, yeah. Consume, <laughs> obey. You know, no independent thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Night Terrors number three. Let's jump into it. Let's go. Okay. Like I said, for, uh, for those who don't have not been keeping up with the book, they don't bother catching you up. They just jump into it. This dead man doing some bullshit. Who gives a fuck? Jumps into it, and now it starts with, okay, dead man and Batman's body and Sandman versus the sleepless knights. Those are the bad guys, like the, his henchmen that are after him. you know. And basically, Sandman's like, my gas isn't working on them. And dead men's are like, yeah, Batman batarangs don't do shit either against these guys. you know. So were they about to get taken out but before they get taken out that's when boom robin shows up damon he's like get your hands off my dad you know and he just starts slicing the demon demon uh the endless nights just like it's nothing and they were like what the fuck and, and sandman because he's like 80 years old has never met robin he's like how old are you kid like he's just fucking he's like how old are you who the fuck wears a fedora anymore you know so then he uh gets them out of there Gets them to the Batarang, and then they fly out of there, and they escape, and then they're out of there. And Robin tells the Bat plane to go 40,000 feet, and Dead Man and Batman's body is like, thanks, kid. Your father must be proud. He's like, don't you put words in my father's name, demon. He's like, they get him on my father's body now. He's like, well, damn, okay. So Dead Man exit Batman's body, and Damien can still see him. He's like, how the hell can you see me? He's like, don't worry about all that. I got, I'm trained to do shit like that, you know. So, Yes, that's going on right now. And no reason Damien is not sleep like the rest of the world because he has trained his body to stay awake or some shit. Whatever. Anyway, that's why you laugh. So the point is, Dead Man, the thing they're looking for is the Nightmare Stone. So Dead Man is like, okay, let me see if I can get into insomnia, uh, Insomnia's body one more time and see if he knows where the thing is. And he goes into a memory that he had at Arkham Asylum. It's called a survivor's meeting. I think it has something to do with like the last bit or whatever like that. So anyway, he's drinking. He said, I can't go to sleep. If I go to sleep, I get the nightmares. Matter of fact, if I close my eyes, I get the nightmares. And the support group is trying to tell him that, you know what, maybe one day you'll forgive the Justice League for what they did. You're like, forgive them? I don't want to forgive them. And then he smashed the guy with the, with the coffee coffee pot in his head, like in the support group. <laughs> and everybody else is like, what the fuck? And then with the glass that he got away from it, he starts stabbing him to death. He was like, no, I want the Justice League to see what I see. And everybody else's support group like, what the fuck? Like, oh, this guy's crazy. Let's get the hell out of here. But before they can get the hell out of there, uh, 
he kills them too. <laughs> I want all of you to know what I know and starts killing them, starts chopping them up and shit like that. They're like, everybody's going to know the truth. Everybody's going to see what I see. Nobody will ever sleep again. Matter of fact, I will never sleep again. And so he takes the glass to himself and cut off his own eyelids. And like, now I will never close my eyes again. They're like, and yes, dead man, I can see you too. You better get out of my memory before you see some really fucked up shit. And then is like, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know. And he's like, okay, yeah, that guy was crazy. He was like, so basically they have an idea like, okay, the Nightmare Stone is not in the Nightmare Realm. And it's not in the land of the living because uh, Dr. Disney already says land of living. So where could it be? And Sam is like, I think I got an idea. It may be somewhere between the land of the of the dreaming and the awake. It's a it's an in-between place. So they go to Wayne Tower because they got a whole bunch of chemicals and shit there. And Sandman is using that to build like a new gas gun that can trap them between the sleeping and the awake world. So Dead Man hops back into Batman's body and Sandman's like, okay, I'm going to shoot you guys this gun. It's going to like partially put you sleep and awake at the same time. Y'all see what y'all can find about the Nightmare Stone and I protect your body while it's going on. They're like, cool. Okay. So he shoots him in the face. And they pass out, and then then they're in the dream world now, you know, like that dream warrior shit. So they're flying around, and Sam is like, "Okay, while y'all doing that, (laughs) right? So while y'all doing that, I'm gonna protect your bodies in case some crazy people come in here. And as soon as that happens, crazy people shows up. Some horse scythe dude, endless night looking dude. He's like, I found you, and Wesley, and like I never eaten a zombie before because Sam is a zombie." They're like, oh, shit, I wasn't ready for this shit. So he grabs Damien's sword, and he goes right at the guy. So they're fighting while dead Batman and Robin are in the nightmare dream sleep world or shit. Anyway, they call the, they call it the hollow. The hollow is, they said, the hollow is what you see out of the corner of your eye. That's what that is. You know, you're not asleep, but you're not dreaming either, you know. So they walk in to find out where they're going. They just walk in and they hear their names, Boston, Damien. So they get walking in there and they find this house, this house with that was all fucked up and it's got a bunch of skulls around it. Now we've heard of the house of mystery and we heard of the house of secrets. This is the house of horror. That is yeah. the first time this has ever been a thing. This is new. <laughs> so, Uh-oh. yeah. So they walk into the book. house. It's going to be worth yeah, 20 this, bucks and hey, this is years. Your kids through college. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's signed so they walk, by Joshua Williams. Joshua Williams. Yeah, because he write every fucking book out there. So, yeah. <laughs> so they walk through the house of horror. And while while Sandman is, is fighting this guy and they and what they see is that Boston brand where he died at, you know, the, the circus place where he died. And he see that he see this is my nightmare and he sees himself. And he like, this is my lie. Because I told everybody when I got shot when I was an acrobat that I died before I knew anything to happen. But that's a lie. I felt the bullet and I felt hit the ground. I felt the impact. I felt everything when I died. But I didn't tell anybody that. And they were like, okay, so the stone is here. So he opened up the guy's rib cage and starts digging in his own rib cage. Meanwhile, Sandman chops the guy's head off and he ripped the guy, goes in the rib cage, and the guy the endless night is holding his own head. He like, you think that's going to kill me? And he starts is like throwing his head at Sandman, like trying to chomp at him and shit. He's like, man, what the fuck? You know? And that's when dead Batman and Robin wake up and they found the nightmare stone. The thing that insomnia been looking for the whole time. Like we found it. Then we can use the, uh, the nightmare stone to kill insomnia. And when I find it, I will have everything I wished for. So, uh Oh, the Nightmare Stone is possessed dead, man, to be continued. So, yeah. So, like I said, I'm enjoying the story. It's just a fun thing, crossover events like that. As long as they just stay with the dead man shit, I'm on board. I'm good. Dude, did you notice you have the Teen Titans cover behind as the thing? No, no, no. That's House of Horrors. Is it? You sure? Is it? Uh-oh. I- did I fuck up? <laughs> Oh damn! That's, that's, I fucked up. No, because the Teen Titans they went into a house of horror. They, they went, into went to the house, house of horror. So the house of horror is better thing. Because so the house of horror is better thing. Oh shit! I fucked up. Okay. Eli will um, be the one to call me on this shit. I'm, you, I'm glad <laughs> you're the one to call me out on this shit. <laughs> hey, I'm just 
Yeah, you know, I'm just like hey, you fucked I, up. I, I just no noticed, shit. like I'm like, yo, that that's the that's my book. He's that's my book. Because really- I just remember House of Horror, so I'm like, nah, but that's not the House of Horror. So anyway, so what book you got next? <laughs> What's your score, man? You uh, seem to is- be liking this event. I'm, I'm liking right? this, man. I'm liking this. I'm a. You're just a reading little- the. You're just reading the main story. Just the main story, and honestly, that's that for for that. I'm catching on what's going on right now. You know. Like I said, I said, as long as you give me Sandman, I'm good. And I wanted the newer Sandman, but they give me old Sandman, but Sandman is Sandman, so I'm good. So, no. 45. Strong so 45. Not, strong not 45. Reading, not reading the punchline tie-in? <laughs> no, I don't even know why she's still a thing. <laughs> stop trying to make punchline happen, DC. Just stop. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So, uh, um, what you got next? Well, I'll, I'll, House of Horrors. I'll go to. I'll go to Teen Titans. I guess so. I World guess. Friday. I guess this is not the first book that House of Horrors <laughs> appeared in. Well, I don't know what this is. This is. They just go into a, like a haunted, like a house, like a haunted house. It's not really haunted. Yeah. It's a chick. I mean, they, it literally said thing. on the cover, House of Horrors. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is so. This is the cover without any of the text. Yeah. Any of the lettering. So. And it looks nothing like the house that I was showing. So maybe it's just they just house of horror. They're just saying house of. I'm a, you read it. You read it. Let me. We're gonna find out. They, what, they go. On. They go into a yes. They go into a a dark spooky house. Okay, yeah. but they don't mention like the house of secrets and the house of mystery and all this shit like that. No, no, no. Huh. No. Interesting. So okay, I think that's just the title of the book, or maybe I don't know. Oh, so so I do win. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay, so this is World's Finest Teen Titans number two, Mark Wade. Mm-hmm. Um, this is basically the the team in their early days because Robin Dick Grayson is still Robin in this book. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not Nightwing yet. He's still Robin. He's still running around in the the you know the green drawers and the yellow cape and shit. Um, Bumblebee is on the team, huh? Okay, he does have pants, right? Does Robin. does he have pants? I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if he has pants. Did they did they start putting pants on him? I guess I don't I pay don't attention. Know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> he didn't. You say have pants. I don't know if that's a, a new fifty two thing, but he he's he's in the book. But I'm, you know, I'm he just used to have pantyhose, just running around in the elf shoes. You know. Oh yeah, he's got like green leggings. Oh okay. So he's wearing green spandex, not drawers. like TikTok pants. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this is them in the early days. Um, Bumblebee uh, is on the team, and it's it starts out with like Bumblebee, Aqualad, and Wonder Girl. They're hanging out. Um, they go to like an amusement park. Wonder Girl has a friend that Bumblebee has the hots for. So this you know got the teen drama romance shit going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they they get a call from Robin. Him and Speedy are and Beast Boy. No, Beast Boy is with them, right? Yeah. Anyways, they get a call that um, a girl flipped out and ran out, ran away. They're looking for a missing girl and tracked her to this house, this dark house of horror. (laughs) (laughs) So they all show up. They all go inside to try and find this girl. And every one of them starts having like nightmares or some kind of scary vision. You know, Beast Boy starts becoming different evil versions of himself. Uh, Speedy starts getting attacked by these monster things and he tries shooting the arrows and he's missing them all. Wonder Girl has a vision of Hippolyta and all the Amazons sort of rejecting her. So that, it's like a thing of like, they're all seeing like their worst fears and it has to do with their uh, insecurity. This damn near Night Terror's book then. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But it's, I, I <laughs> it's, it's not, theme, but it feels like it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think the theme of this book is like insecurity. Because they're teens. They're questioning their abilities. They're questioning their their identity. They're questioning their role in the world. You know what I mean? They're teenagers. So I think that's that's what it is. So basically they all, you know, say fuck it. They, you know, Beast Boy smashes the mirrors and shit, you know, and then he finds the girl. And it turns out this girl has some Danny Moonstar type of powers where she can make people see what they fear. The nightmares and shit, okay. You know, yeah. So they take her, they find her friend, and hey, we can help you. You know, we're gonna help you, basically. And then they, they get a text that they're they're supposed to go to some Comic Con or something in Metropolis, and that's kind of where, oh yeah, let's go. And they go. You know, 
so that's about it. And, and this is fun. You know, it's just a fun team type. Out of continuity, so you don't have to Out know. Out of continuity. All it's just stuff, a, yeah. yeah. You know, these kids are, like I said, the whole theme of identity and feeling insecure about oneself and, you know, getting over those anxieties and insecurities is kind of like the theme of this book. And I, I thought it was cute. I, I, I had a lot of fun with it. You know, I'm, this is number two. It's not a Night Terrors tie. <laughs> it feels like a Night Terrors tie, but it's not a Night Terrors tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a Night Terrors tie. That's, you know, that's the, so it's the only DC book that I did read. This <laughs> But so yeah, I'll give it a four out of five. I, I dug on this. Cool, cool. All right. So uh last book I'm going to do is where is that book? You only did two books? Well, yeah, because I read yours. Oh, that's right. So, <laughs> Cause I had a feeling you were gonna read it, but I'm like, I gotta read this shit. I gotta see what the hell going on with this. Oh, Immortal X Men number 14. That's oh that's, shit. That's, so you didn't read the Superman annual? Nah, I saw it too. I was like, mm. did you? Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. What? Did you? Yeah, I did. Should review did. I should review. I thought. I thought. I thought that you were gonna read it. <laughs> I thought about. I was like, I don't really want to read the same. I just wait till it come on DC Universe. But shit, you should have did that. And I should have did X Men. Oh, uh, Ghost Rider versus Wolverine. <laughs> well, you're the Superman expert, so <laughs> I am. Yeah, you're the Ghost Rider expert. So, <laughs> so it would have been off brand. People were watching the show. They'd be like, what the fuck going on here? You know? Yeah. Next day, we'll talk about Predator. Shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay. So, book we're going to do X Men. There we go. Okay. So, this is the the, the day after the the Hellfire Gala when all hell broke loose. The day all hell broke loose with that. Um, that's what happened. Uh, and they kind of they kind of catch you up with what happened with the story also. So, we're just going to get to that. So, Professor X is by himself and he's you know reflecting on everything that just happened with him and god they're saying this is about a few weeks to happen they're just saying x weeks happen we don't know how many weeks happen you just interpret it however you want to interpret it but basically the whole thing uh everybody died you know and the orcas had hacked into the x-men's drug where they're going to kill millions of people if professor x doesn't get all of his mutants off the planet so he mind controls the mutants to get them off the planet you know and the ones that don't do it, he forcibly you use them to get off the planet because he thinks that they're going to Mars, Arako, the other mutant planet. But they didn't. They don't know where they went. So Professor X mind control every mutant controller to walk into the sun or some shit. He don't know because he can't feel their, their presence anymore. The only people that didn't walk through the gates are the people he personally trained, also known as the X-Men. So yeah, so the X-Men didn't walk through the gate. Just the the, the shitty mutants that no one gives a shit about. They're the ones that walk through. Them. So yeah. So that's his whole thing right there. And he just realized that he just wanted to just sit by himself. And this is classic panel. They were all dead. I killed them because he think he did. So he's just on Krakoa just by himself. He is the only person on Krakoa right now. So yeah. So we go past that. And then we go through Sebastian Shaw uh, of the Hellfire Club, who just conveniently was absent that day of the Hellfire Gala. Because he's working with Orcus, that's why. But or he made a deal with Orcus. Orcus wanted him to join Orcus. He has to become human. So he takes a drug to eliminate his mutant powers. He's human now. So no more mutant. So while he's doing that, and he made a deal like, okay, if I help you kill off the mutants, get rid of the mutants, you're going to give me control of Caproa and I get all the money. So he's talking to his secretary. Okay, tell me how much money I have now, now that I own Caproa. And she's looking, she's like, uh... Yeah, you your bank account has not changed. It's the exact same as it was last time. He's like, wait, what? But I own Krakoa. She's like, yeah, you do own Krakoa. But Krakoa isn't worth anything. The actual resources, the finances, somebody else owns that. She's like, oh, hell no. I'm about, about to talk to those people right now. So he gets up, storms out of the room, uh, goes to his secret hell room, whatever like that, and he summons uh, Mother Righteous. M Mother Righteous is the one he made the deal with that you said... That if I did such and such, you were going to give me Krakoa and you give me all the money. That, that was a deal. We, we were doing a business deal. She was like, I don't do business deals. I'm a magician. I do magic. So what do you expect to happen when you make a deal with a magic person? They're going to screw you over. That's what we do. So and he like, okay, I'm going to kill you for uh, unless you make this right. He's like, oh, you got bigger problems than me because you screwed over Krakoa and that's going to have repercussions. So bye. So she left out of there and basically... 
the very first thing is that the hellfire soldiers and shit like that they kick him out because they say his hellfire membership has been revoked by the new black king so you just no longer so the the owner of Krakoa has kicked him out of the hellfire club he's like okay so who is the new owner the new owner of of Krakoa well not the Krakoa but the the person in charge of the finance of Krakoa is Wilson Fisk the kingpin he controls the money Krakoa and he has kicked Sebastian Shaw out of the hellfire club so he's now he'll Wilson Fisk is now the kingpin is not a member of the hellfire club so he's like oh shit so and Emma Frost is like yeah you fucked up I know everything you did I'm disappointed what you did because I did everything I was still my neck after you put you on the quiet council and this is what you did so she's best disappointed meanwhile Sebastian Shaw thinks that he's going to find a way to screw uh to get back at it so he basically launched a plan to get back at the uh the to get Krakoa back and so he's going to send his soldiers out there to secure Krakoa but they keep telling him we can't do that because there's monsters on Krakoa he's like no they're not monsters they're just mutants there's a difference he's like no I know the difference between a monster mutant there are monsters on Krakoa stop us from getting there so and then you see uh, Professor sitting there by himself and Emma Frost is telling him the mutants might not be dead I've contacted Reed I've contacted Strange I've contacted T'Challa maybe they can find a way to find out what happened to the mutants they they're probably not dead and he just not listen to her but while that happens he sees Orca soldiers going on the beach so what happens he summons monsters he makes them think of monsters in their mind that's all he does and when they see that they just run off that's all so and he's like i want to make sure and so he's just gonna sit there and make sure that nobody else comes on krakoa so he's gonna just be on that island it's like tom cruise and castaway just by himself so yeah uh meanwhile what happened to the mutants they're on somewhere else all of them 250,000 mutants are there right now somewhere we don't know they're not on earth there may be another dimension we don't know where they are but they're just there and they're all scared they don't know what to do so that's when exodus just starts gives this long speech and like to listen to me my mutants i will guide you to the promised land they gave us this desert we will make this desert our own and we will start an exodus and so it's a very very heavy-handed message that they're giving i will lead my people you know to the promised land and they walk and they start their exodus so yeah he's moses that the hebrews so, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing so yeah that's the story so like i said this i feel like this book is about to wrap up i think that's why they don't care what happens after this because like i said the fall of x is coming they're about to end all this shit anyway so this is kind of like a, a wrap up to that so yeah so it was a book it was a thing it was a book. oh by the way <laughs> you sound yeah, you sound thrilled <laughs> yeah I, I, some of these are more x-men books some of them are like really fun but once they got rid of the quiet council was the kind of the whole point of the book it's like what is the point of the book if you're not doing the whole political bullshit, it's just a book so yeah oh and by the way emma frost has mind wiped everybody on the planet so nobody even remembers that miss marvel died there you go oh so, that, well that was convenient that was convenient so yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh yeah so what, what book you got next well this might be my book of the week all right superman <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is godzilla here be dragons number two okay let's see what we got uh, I, I grabbed I one, had, I grabbed yes. one. Let's see if that's the one i had a lot nope, of fun with this that's um so this is uh just kind of a you know a, a godzilla book versus pirates takes back place in the 1600s pirates looking for lost treasure they encounter godzilla um everybody was up in arms like, how does god how is godzilla you know exist mm -hmm. in the 1600s facing pirates when he's basically was created by you know the I'm atomic bomb you know? yeah all that <laughs> shit. yeah <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but i believe like i said last last issue i believe this is the legendary universe the the warner brothers the americanized version of godzilla the kraken and all those yeah where he was basically just an ancient beast that's existed always existed on earth mm -hmm. so uh so yeah but this is basically pirates it's it's basically a pirate book um so this pirate is being, you know, he's in the gallows. He's about to be executed. 
by the Spanish Armada, and he starts retelling this story about his this pirate crew that he was a part of, this pirate ship that he was on, and how they were chasing this treasure. This one pirate stole treasure and made it to this mythical monster island, and they went to go find him. And they were getting chased by the Spanish Armada. Um, so that's where this issue gets picked up, picks up from that. Um, the, they were being chased by the Spanish Armada. Godzilla shows up and just murks the whole Spanish Armada, which I found very entertaining. <laughs> like, nice. Because okay. fuck the Spanish Armada and all the shit right. that they did. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was very satisfying, just seeing Godzilla just take out the whole fleet of ships. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the pirates land on Monster Island. They encounter giant turtles, giant bats. They're, it's, it's Monster Island. Um you know, Monster Island goes back to, you know, the Showa era of Godzilla movies, the original movies, where it was just a, a place where the monsters gathered, where Earth, in one movie, Earth actually put like a force field around it and trapped all the monsters there and stuff like that. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a recurring uh, idea in a, a lot of Godzilla movies, Monster Island. Um, so, yeah, so these pirates are on Monster Island, you know, trying to survive all the different giant monsters being attacked, you know, by them and shit. They end up finding that pirate ship, the, the pirate, the, 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 the ones that they were looking for that had the treasure, they end up finding it at the end of the book. But, um, the, the, we cut back to modern time and the guy in the gallows, the guy telling the story, the, the, the cops or whatever, the, 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 the general doesn't believe him. He's like, I don't believe any of this crap. Let's go hang him. So that, that's kind of where it ends. Is like you know, uh, to be continued there. But it's, it's it's basically yeah. He's telling this flashback of the story. So I don't know how he's gonna get out of it. I'm hoping Godzilla shows up and saves him. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but dude, this was just fun. Once like the first book was a little rocky because there wasn't much Godzilla in it. But he showed up in this, and he yeah, and it was cool. So Godzilla showing up, taking out the whole Spanish fleet. That was dope. So yeah, this is my book of the week, four out of five, and they have not lost me yet. So I thought this was cool. And I'm a Godzilla fan, so that 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 helps too. Nice. Okay. No. All right. Oh uh, any any since, books you got? Well, since you mentioned it and you didn't <laughs> I'll, so I'll didn't attempt, do it. Okay. So we're doing I'll a switcheroo. We're doing a switcheroo. Yeah. Freak, <laughs> Freaky Friday. Okay. <laughs> I'll attempt to review. Oh, this. you got a graph? Okay. I, I okay. grabbed it real quick. I grabbed it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the Superman annual book. So yeah, I, I like we said, we'd say we're kind of in a Superman renaissance right now. We're just Superman is cool at the moment. It, the cool show. Joshua Lois. Williams, I guess, writing Superman and Lois. Yeah, <laughs> Superman and Lois. Yeah, we're just the show and they're not doing any good. dumbass injustice shit. No, it's Superman. How Superman it's supposed Superman. to be? So, yeah. Good old fashioned good guy Superman. Yeah. Right. He doesn't have to be evil, doesn't have to break necks, doesn't have to Zack Snyder yeah. everything up. No, he's just Superman. That's it. <laughs> yeah, just, just a wholesome boy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but this is the annual. So it's basically a, you know how annuals go. I, I understand why I didn't read it. It is basically a greatest hits. Yeah. Um basically it's 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 Lois at the Daily Bugle. No, Daily planet right yeah that's that's spider-man <laughs> yeah daily planet <laughs> lois is the editor and she's assigning all these reporters different assignments and each one of them kind of goes off and encounters a different superman villain. I, I, I do like how she listed everybody on there and their job titles and what they do i thought that's pretty cool so mm -hmm. yeah so I'm not the biggest Superman fan. I, I'm not well versed in Superman lore or history or any of his old villains. I did recognize Parasite. Um because that was in this same book, like earlier, you know, it wasn't yeah. in this run, but like that, yeah. There was a couple other people, Moon Knight or Moon Somebody. I don't know. She she's new. Um, she's new. That's that's a new thing. Okay. They're setting they're um, setting her up. So yeah. And then the whole time Superman is fighting Toy Man. Oh yeah. I don't know why Toy Man is back, but okay. Yeah, he's fighting Toy Man while all these different reporters are doing shit. And, you know, like I said, bringing up all these old villains from Superman history or whatever. And then at the end, was it 
Was Brain was it Brainiac? Am I thinking of this book? Is that who showed up? Let me see. I can't remember now. See, <laughs> I think Brainiac showed at the showed up at the end. Oh shit! Okay, they just and, and it up. said and it said to be continued. So let me let me just confirm. Hmm. Um, ooh, the Blue Beetle movies coming. Yeah, yeah, Brainiac. So Brainiac does show up at the got, end. Nice. Got the, got the city of Zarnia. Zarnia. Oh, Zar Zarnia. Yeah. Oh shit. So he's got he's got the city of Zarnia in a little shrunken. You know you know it. what that is, right? You know what that is, right? No, no, I don't. <laughs> Lobo. Oh. Yeah. Lobo is yeah. the last Lo Zarnia. Oh, yeah. Lo yeah. Lo Lo Lobo is in this book. Yeah. Okay. Lobo showed up. I so so Brittany has his city basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because Lobo is in. They got Lobo. Yeah. Oh, he he's got Lobo. Well, well, Lobo is doing some shit. Okay. Because, so but, yeah. yeah, so they got that. They, okay, so it looked like Subban and, and Lobo was in a team. I up. can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. See, I yeah. But yeah, Lobo was at, at the end. It was almost like an after credits, you know, like the book ended, and then meanwhile, then it showed Lobo, and then it cut to Brainiac, and he's got the city in the jar and, yeah. and Zarnia. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's that's his yeah. planet, city, whatever, or whatever. Okay. So to be continued. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, now you sold me on it. <laughs> I might Three check out, out of five. I, yeah, I like I, you know, like I said, I didn't know a lot of these characters or the references. I'd say. So. Yeah, throwing all this Krypton lore yeah. and yeah. So, but yeah, I, I, I can read it. And, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, well, we got anything else or? No, I'm booked out. The only okay. other book I read was the Guardians, but you know, I don't need to review that. That was I. Right. Mm -hmm. We, All right, still so we'll revealed what, we still have they still haven't revealed what group fall is or why group is doing with shit. So they're, probably they're saying that's gonna be next issue. So. Okay, we will we'll see. I might jump on it then and see what's going on. So yeah. all right, like I said, this week was the 50th anniversary of hip hop. So happy birthday hip hop. Also, rest in peace, because this just happened right before we started recording. That's why I didn't do this first, but rest in peace to Magoo. He's a rapper in the 2000s that was with Timberland. If you hear his songs, you will know him. He's like, oh, that guy. But, oh. you know. I suppose I should say rest in peace to Robbie Robertson. Uh, when he was in the band. He's a native musician. He was in the band that did the the, the band. They're called the band. They did oh, the wait. the band. Okay. You know? okay. Yeah, they did the wait. And um, uh, if you heard the song, I'm sure if, when you hear the song, you'll recognize it. But he was a famous native musician, you know. So he just passed away this week too. So okay. good journey so, to him. Yes, yeah, so that's all we got. Like I said, uh next week, I guess I will be in a the theater by myself reviewing Blue Beetle because the way they're saying oh, nobody's gonna Does watch it come out movie. next week? That's what they're saying. So yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. They can't even promote the movie because of the writer's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they can't even do it. They can't tweet about it. They can't do anything. So yeah. No, is next Any week Ahsoka? No, oh, so, week after. no, that's the week after. Week after. Okay, yeah. So okay. basically, I got next week. You got week after. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Magoo sounds like Q-tip to me. Yes, they did say that Magoo did kind of mimic or sound like Q-tip. Okay, yo. Since we're talking, let's just get this. You know, since we're talking about hip hop, what uh, was your first experience with hip hop? First experience with hip hop. Man, that's a that's a that's a tough question. Oh. Like, what got you into it? Well, like, really got me into it. I'm going to say Nas, It Ain't Hard to Tell, or, like, that whole Illmatic album. Like, that okay. really got me into it. Of course, you know, I heard rap songs before, but as far as, like, what it got me into it, like, okay, I'm, I'm in it now. You know, I've, I've heard Run DMC and all this stuff like that. You know, I heard it, but I was like, eh, that's, that's cool. But the Nas, Illmatic album, like, got me into it. Like, okay, I'm hooked. I got to start. Getting albums like that. Now, the first album I ever bought, well, the first tape I ever bought, Doggy Style, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's like, I, see, I, I'm, I'm older than you. It makes me feel old that that's your first tape. <laughs> that's the first tape. I've, I, like, I've heard tapes before. I've heard NWA. Uh, I heard uh, Naughty by Nature, even though we weren't supposed to listen to Naughty by Nature right at the time we were, because oh. we weren't supposed to know what OPP meant. You know, you so, know, you know yeah, what one of my first tapes was? The first cassette tapes I had? Was it Herbie Hancock 
future shock oh, with oh, rocket on okay. it do 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 yeah yeah i, I know that well, yeah they played on the radio all the time yeah and the and the video on mtv with all the robots and shit but yeah, i guess I for me know. what made me aware of hip-hop was break dancing like i tried to break dance like in the mid 80s i was wearing parachute pants i was trying to do mini spins and you, you, you still the moves pop lock i can still it. do the cook i can still do the kick worm <laughs> yeah my big fat ass can still do the kick okay worm. <laughs> that's gonna be our first video on our TikTok page when we make one. <laughs> me, me Eli doing the caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watch me fucking like throw out my back and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was one of my first rap tapes I owned was the Fat Boys, Big and Beautiful. See, I only know the Fat Boys from their movies. That's the thing. Yeah. See, I see this they, disorderlies. Yeah, disorderlies. They were in Crush Groove. So I was into yeah. all that shit. You know, but um, but then of course I took the metal detour and I became a metalhead, and it was like years later hearing NWA and Public Enemy, kind of like I was a metalhead that listened to rap. You know, and of course Fat Son, Fat T, like I said, he's my brother. He listened to hip hop. I was in the metal, and we kind of like crisscross. So Wait, I mean, in the nineties, like, yeah. metal and hip hop almost kind of. You know, bled yeah. together anyway. Like it, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell them apart anyway. You, like you could tell yeah. the influence on both. Yeah. So he would like he's the one who got me. He's her, how I heard Mob Deep. He's how I heard MOP, and you know a lot of shit was through, you know, Fat T. You know. So. Yes, so. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so happy birthday right. to hip hop shit. Happy <laughs> birthday to hip hop. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, that's the show. We'll come back with something next week and we'll kind of go from there. Until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We'll talk to you guys next week. Same bully time, same bully channel. Batman Scoop, Crook and Clan, Timberland, Timberland. Batman Scoop, Crook and Clan, Timberland, Timberland. Whatever I say, y'all gotta do. Whatever I say, y'all gotta do. Whatever I say, y'all gotta do. Y'all too, y'all too, y'all too, y'all too. Y'all too. Guess who's coming? Timberland, aka Pickfield Drummonds. Who gon' get it crunk like me, Timberland? Oh, my nigga Scoop, aka Fat Man. We guaranteed to make the party people bounce. Fellas say, oh, girls say, ah. Looking at the corn rolls up in the club. Girl, don't be bashful, girl, back it up. Throw it, girl, like it's potent, man. Shake that ass as fast as you can. White girl, shake it like you're burning from a suntan. My dog, grip it, grab it like it was a soda can. What you talking about holding back? Better get on the dance floor, drop it like it was a Cadillac. What you talking about cutting the slack? Girl, Girl, you better bend that back. Well, my girls roll deep in the club. Can't wait to hit the bar and get effed up. Well, my dogs who got more than a hundred bucks. Can't wait to freak one of those big old bugs. Before we start to turn it out, you must learn to crunk out. Before we start to turn it out, you must first begin to On the block now, drop. Let a nigga see the coochie pop now, drop. Do the snake, do the freak, do the bop now, drop. Yo, don't stop, don't stop. Real eyes, down south thighs now, drop. Waistline, five, six, seven now, drop. One time, all in together now, drop. Yo, don't stop, don't stop. Get your freak on, the club be gone. We ain't put the album out, niggas got they leak on. I done went up in the club, seen a hoe with a thong. Gang, her good at first, she was singing the song. Shorty rockin' Donna, she was pushing and poppin'. Red bone with a bop, she was stopping and dropping, stopping and dropping. Girl, this the part of the song when you need be snaking and whopping, snaking and whopping. Yeah, ho, mag made the song. Y'all niggas still popping and locking. He ain't no zone and he ain't the white girl. I ain't turbo, rockin' the damn curl. Watch mag ho, I'ma break it down slow. When you get it right, girl, go for what you know. Wiggle a bit, stop. Drop, get up, snake, freak, rock, wiggle a bit, stop, drop, get up, snake, freak, rock, get off the wall, hands off your balls, yeah, nigga with the brick in your hand, trying to ball, you don't want shorty, I don't show you the dance, go once, go twice, you done lost your chance, now stop for big pun, stop for big pun, drop for big girl, drop for big girl. If you got the fattest ass on the block, now drop, let a nigga see the coochie pop, now drop, do the snake, do the freak, do the rock, now drop, yo, don't stop, don't stop. Six, seven, nine, drop one time. All in the cabin, now drop. Yo, don't stop, don't stop. Guess
Guess who came with a cape on his back, pulled up with some gin, hopped out the Cadillac. Mag is chilling, Tim is chilling. When I get up in this club, I'm making a whole killing. Got no gang, but I got big cash. Mess around, I be leaving this club with Stacey Dash. I ain't cute enough, but my Jimmy got a pick in his shimmy. I'm in the club pulling hoes with Timmy. I'm a shadow, people, pick it where you at. I'm a Broadway, people, pick it where you at. With my fellas in the bag with the carny at. With my girls who think they got it like that. All my independent women, pick it where you at. All my get money dog, pick it where you at. With my girls with the thong, they shake. If you love to sing along, nigga, holler back. If you got the fattest ass on the block, now drop. Let a nigga see the coochie pop, now drop. Do the snake, do the freak, do the wop, now drop. Yo, don't stop, don't stop. We're high, down south, thighs, now drop. Waistline, five, six, seven, now drop. One time, all in together, now drop. Yo, don't stop, don't stop. Show me what you're working with. Show me what you're working with. Show me what you're working with. Show me what you're working with.